Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage. Welcome to our uh, monthly tech meet for Rolls-Royce Owners Club of Southern California. Uh, today we will be uh, overhauling a water pump that has already been removed from an 85 Corniche. So now we're, we can see the old seal here. This one's kind of beat up, you can see that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this center shaft, because I have to pry this seal out, into soft jaws. These are aluminum jaws. Ronnie, as far as setting the depth, when before you pulled that off, it was like the uh, the shaft was flush with the uh, the impeller. The end, yeah. So that's what you would do when you reinstall. Oh, I'm going to push it a little further down because I know that normally this sticks out. And I told you that somebody else had been in there, right? And had uh, and it almost looks like something was rubbing there. If you look at this, mm -hmm. okay. Once you so you go to the bottom of. Well, I'm just going to push it down a little bit more. You just got to make sure for sh sure that you're not up against this. Right. Um, we can actually walk over there and take a look and see if that front cover, I think, is damaged. Once you replace that, that seal in there, what else can go wrong with that component that might require you having to take it off in the next two or three years? Or is that pretty much the only thing that's going to fail on that component? Well, I'm replacing the parts that normally fail, the bearings and seals. What would it cost in comparison to replace it with a new one? And it's generally a lot more. I have one's going to give you that long lifespan. I wonder if this. Well, is it'll be give recurring. you at least seven years, right? Yeah. Uh, it's usually cost prohibitive. Okay. This is usually like four or five hundred dollars. Okay. Uh, I think the last one of these I bought was about twelve hundred dollars. Bearings and seals is probably about one fifty max. Okay. It's significant. Labor's not much different because I don't charge but maximum an hour to do this. Okay. So you might have an hour less on labor, but you're going to have. And of course, there's always that availability thing. Yeah. I'm thinking for four or five hundred dollars more, you've got a brand new part mm -hmm. that you don't have to worry about anything on for the n at least mm -hmm. seven years. Well, that's that's a good way to look at it, if you have the means. Not everybody does. I, you know, it's headache factor for me. Uh -huh. Well, I get it. Totally get it. So now what we're going to do is this seal in here looks like that. So you got to get it out of there to get to the guts underneath. So what I start with is let's tighten bigger screwdrivers. And what you're hearing that crunching is the carbon. There's a carbon seal in there. The thing is, is this is a press fit on that shaft. So what we're doing, I'm trying to pry that up there. I'm going to have to do some. Maybe I'll have to get out my air chisel like I did last one. Could you, could you use like a penetrating lubricant? No, this is a press fit. That isn't going to do you a whole lot of good. And it's not seized on there by corrosion. It's pressed on there. So let's, everybody watch your eyes, please, because this is going to have a bunch of stuff. Out there. This is probably why a lot of dealerships, because of the pitfalls, yeah, they just they just get some rebuilt and they don't have to worry about it. Hey Ronnie, I got a general question. Sure. So what were the symptoms that you or the owner said, hey, I needed a cooling pump or I need work done on the cooling pump. Oh, uh, well, this is a new customer. As you can see, I'm peeling this off. Mm -hmm. And... Leak and seal, noise, inefficient cooling, overheating, or... Uh, I'm just curious. It's a new customer. They have a lot of cars. It was in a storage facility, and they said there was a lake under it. So... Oh, when, Thank you. Mm -hmm. It was leaking is what, what the problem was. It wasn't noise, it wasn't any of the other things. All right, now. Wouldn't it be possible to, for example, go in this end of the thing and push that out? Boy, if you can figure out how to do that, I'll give you $100 right now. Uh-huh. No. I would thought not. this would come off. It won't come off until, as you see, as I explained earlier, there's a snap ring holding it inside the bearings uh -huh. underneath the seal. I see. Oh, 
thought I was behaving. Oh, there it is. Off that one. We have success. Okay. Except we still have a little piece of metal on that. It's got Does that have on. aluminum? No, it's like tin. Okay. All right, so I'm, I'm still, there's still some more tin on there, so I gotta, if I don't get that off, it won't come off, the bearing won't let it go through. I can't see. As you can see, it's really thin tin. We're dead okay. Same kind of metal, but it's wrapped around that shaft, and it has to come off. Or you cannot get this thing apart. And, and Ronnie, a, a few nicks in the shaft. Because the press fit. It's a press fit. I will put sealer on it, and it's yeah, a few nicks on the shaft. It's good. You can tell you you've been around cars a while. Yes. The pressure on this is not very significant. Maybe 16 pounds max. There we go. No, not on this operation. Once I get it all the way down to its limit. There we go. Once it started peeling, see how it is now? Let me get it up. Come out. There you go. And it was corrosion mostly. It's pressed on, but it was corroded on there too. All right, I'm gonna get this, all these little chunks out of here. Back in there. Do you resurface that flame? I will put it up to the wire wheel. Uh, now, we get down to the snap ring in there that's holding it all together. No, not really. The brass thing at the bottom? No, there's a snap ring with the, let me turn it your way. You see the two little ears with the holes in them? Yeah. That's what the snap ring is. Oh, that's wrong. There it is. That's what's holding the shaft inside the two bearings. Okay. So, now we have to get that shaft out. And the natural idea is just think, uh -huh. what you're gonna do is you're gonna mushroom this. So we have to be real careful. I had mushroomed so many of these, and I would taper them afterwards, but I figured out I'm gonna do it differently. So I take a piece of pipe, use the press, just push it out. Okay, so I'm going to go over to the press now. This is what I do because I've damaged them before and it's, it's no fun when you cause that kind of problem. So that's just a steel pipe that you cut to the length? Yeah, that's a... This is cast iron. Yeah, that's why I asked the question. You can't fix them that easy. It shouldn't be that tight, just so you know. Almost. Okay. And the reason it doesn't damage is because it's constant pressure from that? It's not banging? Is that why it's constant, that? right. Banging. Because I said this steel is pretty soft. You hit anything with a hammer, it's going to cause a, a dent or a divot in it. And uh, I, I, I want to avoid ruining the impeller. 